Oh, too close. Good morning, guys. So, last night was... Eh, I'm going to go ahead and get up and, and uh, get the day started. But I just snagged this, like, pound and a half crappie. Oh, my goodness. All day for this little... Guys, I'm killing it. It's just crazy. Got the little stove going here, a little denatured alcohol stove. Trying to trying to boil me some water, which I already got boiling water, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my my oatmeal here. Then I'm gonna cook me some spam on my my little uh, thing there. I'm gonna cook my spam there. But anyways, this house working. Right, now I got my little Bam single cooking on the fire. And got my oatmeal. The boiled water. We'll let that sit for a few minutes. We're gonna eat up real good here in a minute. Alright. All packed up. Nothing left in here. What's up, Reagan? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to edit that out. Jeez. <laughs> So you don't want to uh, share that with everyone? I want to share that with everybody. Yeah, yeah, you better start over. <laughs> I bet. Uh, it's all good. All right. So leave no trays behind, guys. Man, we're all packed out. There was Luke's hole over there. This was Reagan's hole. This was Houston's hole right here. And we're out of here. This was a beautiful little, beautiful little spot. So we headed out of camp to continue our navigation down the Devil's River. Houston had went ahead of us by a good 20 or 30 minutes. So it was pretty much Luke, Reagan, and myself for the next few hours till we caught up with Houston. So we had the chance to stop and do a little bit more fishing than we did the first day. So the first fish of the day was a little sunfish, but hey, in my book, a fish is a fish and I always love catching one. So I actually lost a really nice largemouth whenever I was trying to turn on my GoPro for the first sunfish. But I was satisfied with getting a few sunfish and this little bass here so we went ahead and packed it on up and headed down the river a little bit more. And I was really glad that my fly came out of that tree because there were a lot of bees in there. So here Luke and I approach our first set of reed beds which you're going to find scattered throughout your trip down the Devil's River. But the issue here is always picking your way through the reed beds. And with the water being a little lower than ideal for this trip, we had a little tougher time getting through them at different moments.
One very important aspect of going through the reed beds is always making sure to break down your rods and have everything within the kayak, nothing sticking out because sure enough, you leave something sticking out of your kayak, it's gonna get hung on a reed and it's gonna get broken or messed up or pulled off the boat, whatever the case may be. Always best to break down your rods before you go through these reed beds. Just a little something I learned by experience throughout this trip. Due to the lower than ideal water levels, we did have the opportunity to get hung up on rocks every now and then, which did cause us to run into one another every now and then, which wasn't of course the uh, funnest thing we did the whole trip, but it made it interesting anyway. So after that set of rapids, there was this huge hole that I could not resist throwing a fly line into. I did not come up with anything, but it was still a, an enjoyment to try and catch something anyway. So after I finished fishing, I was a little behind Luke and Reagan. They had already went ahead of me by quite a bit. So I was kind of on my own to navigate this next set of rapids which turned out to be pretty exciting. So much better than yesterday. Man, yesterday we were just dragging and crazy this is much better a little more a little higher water left or right I decided with Reagan catching some fish here, I would go ahead and give it a quick stop and try. Although Reagan did pretty good pulling a few fish out of this hole, using a uh, white rooster tail on his spin rod, I didn't have any luck. So after a little while, I decided it was time to go ahead and pack it up and catch back up with the fellas. So as I was trying to catch up with the fellas, 
I just had to stop and take in the beauty for a moment and do a little filming as the Devil's River is just has some of the most amazing and beautiful sights of any river that I've ever been on. Even though we didn't have to get out and drag the kayaks as much, there was still a bit of scooching before Dolan Falls on the second day here. When I got back up with the guys, decided to take a little underwater footage. Although in this area it wasn't as clear as others, there was a little bit more green tint to this water. It was still beautiful to see anyway. All right, we just took a quick break, just right back over here in these trees in the shade. We're about to, the guys are already going on. We're going to get down river. It's uh, going to get a little bit worse from here as far as rapids, things like that. So we just went ahead and, you know, secured everything down real good. Just made sure everything was bungeed and strapped and, you know, done up, done up real good. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's get down river and do this. Right here, in portage over this little little road here. We got Luke still coming up back there, and then we're getting ready to hit some more rapids, and it's just beautiful.
Yeah. Hard left! One of the most beautiful spots. We just came out of those falls, rapids. <laughs> Crazy. Although the rods were all packed up, I had to go ahead and unpack my seven weight fly rod to give it a chance here. I couldn't help it with how beautiful this area was, just had to give it a chance. Again, Reagan pulled out a couple nice bass, but I did not do any good here. Although in a place like this, you just gotta love trying, no matter if you're catching fish or not. It's too great to pass up. So as I approached this rapid, I noticed that it had a pretty good drop and I felt like I needed to back up, take a double look at it and get a better approach. I can say I did not flip my kayak on the devils, but I sure cannot say I did not submerge it a few times, just like this right here. After a few grunts and some heavy lifting, it was all good. And folks, that right there is why you tie all your stuff down on the Devil's River, because you never know when you're gonna go over or get flooded out. So I caught up with the guys at the next reed garden, and as you guessed it, more dragging. But that was okay, because as soon as we got out of this reed garden, it opened up into a huge, beautiful deep hole that was practically a lake and we just let the wind blow us down river. Alright, so the wind is just kind of pushing us as you guys can see. We're heading down this way. I'm just uh, enjoying a little, little tuna snack and some crackers for lunch. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here, guys. I don't want the video to get too long. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the action in day two, part two. Some interesting things happen. You guys won't want to miss it. Hey, thanks for watching. God bless and go fly fishing. Devil's River, man. This is day two that we're on. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to edit that out. Jeez. <laughs> no, you don't want to share that with everyone? I want to share that with everybody.